we'll explain how condensing boilers or condensing heaters work and their residential and commercial applications. Why are condensing boilers more efficient than the standard non-condensing boilers? We'll explain what you should think about before adding a condensing boiler to your home or commercial property. Before we explain how a condensing boiler works, it's best to understand how a conventional non-condensing boiler operates. How standard boilers work. The conventional non-condensing boiler uses one heat exchanger to transfer heat between the burning fuel and the water. As the water enters the heat exchanger, it absorbs heat from the combustion of fuel that has been ignited with a mixture of air. The water enters cold and leaves heated for use in heating spaces or domestic water purposes. The high temperature flue gas is exhausted out to the atmosphere through a vent. This is wasted heat and energy that you have paid for. If this boiler is 75% efficient, then basically you've exhausted 25% of your money out the flue. The condensing boiler makes use of this heated flue gas before it's exhausted to the atmosphere. How condensing boilers work? A condensing boiler uses two heat exchangers instead of one. This additional heat exchanger is used to capture the heat from the flue gases being exhausted. It's called a condensing boiler because it removes latent heat, moisture, from the hot flue gas, causing water to condense out of the flue exhaust air. This moisture collects at the bottom of the heat exchanger and must be drained to an improved drain receptor, much like you would with an air conditioner's condensate drain. Since the heat exchanger is exposed to moisture, it must be made of non-corrosive material, such as stainless steel. This condensate from the boiler must be treated before it is allowed into the drain system because it's considered acidic. This is accomplished by adding a little inline filter on the drain line. The filter may contain limestone, which absorbs some of the acidic nature of the condensate neutralizing it before it enters the drain. The incoming cold water is preheated as it passes through the secondary heat exchanger before it enters the primary heat exchanger. This secondary heat exchanger is what increases the efficiency of the condensing boiler. The secondary heat exchanger gives the condensing boiler a second opportunity to absorb heat from the energy expended during combustion by absorbing heat from the exiting flue gases. By capturing heat that would otherwise be wasted, the condensing boiler achieves higher operating efficiencies. These higher efficiencies are why condensing boilers are mandated in some jurisdictions and why utilities often offer rebates. Check with your local utility company to see if rebates or incentives are available for changing a conventional boiler to a condensing boiler. Non-condensing or standard boilers have a range of efficiency from 75 to 84 percent while condensing boilers can exceed 90 percent and all the way up to 98%. This will allow you to save on your annual fuel cost while also helping the environment. If you spend a dollar on fuel for your standard boiler at 75% efficiency, then you are throwing away 25% of your money through the heated exhaust gases. This is 25 cents for every dollar you spend. With a condensing boiler or heater that is 95% efficient, 
you are making your dollar more efficient as now only 5% is wasted in the exhausted flue gas. This means that for every dollar you spend, only 5 cents is wasted on flue gas exhaust. Within the condensing boiler, the flue gas and water travel in opposite directions. The flue gas first enters the primary heat exchanger, while the water first enters the secondary heat exchanger. Flue gas material. Since a condensing boiler has much lower flue gas temperatures, most manufacturers recommend the use of PVC or CPVC. Installing plastic piping is easier and less expensive than the standard metal flues used in conventional boilers. For those of you who love the science behind the operation, just remember that the latent heat from the condensation provides around 970 BTUs per pound of latent energy. This latent heat is what contributes to the increased efficiency, as this heat would otherwise be exhausted to the atmosphere. Boiler efficiency increases as the return water temperature decreases. Condensation occurs below 130 Fahrenheit, 54.4 Celsius, with the greatest efficiencies occurring the closer the return water gets to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15.5 Celsius. In commercial applications, it's best to get your supply temperature down to 140 Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius, as this provides an opportunity for better efficiencies. The engineer will have to make sure that the heat exchangers or whatever is receiving the heating hot water can operate at lower supply temperatures as this will affect the surface areas of coils. Considerations for retrofitting a non-condensing boiler to a condensing boiler. Here are some main points to consider in commercial applications when retrofitting a project that has a conventional non-condensing boiler to a new condensing boiler. Number one, keep return water temperature as far below 130 Fahrenheit, 54.4 Celsius, as possible to take advantage of the increased efficiency at these lower temperatures. Number two, condensate drain piping with an inline filter to neutralize the acidic condensation. This includes the requirement for an approved drain receptor. Number three, boiler flue stack to be installed using PVC or similar material. Number four, heat exchanger to be made of non-corrosive material such as stainless steel. Number five, higher delta T for existing fan coils or heat exchangers. Do they have the ability for lower flow GPM with greater temperature difference using a lower return temperature? Number six, the old system might have been designed with a smaller delta T, maybe 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 Celsius, the difference between supply and return water temperatures. The new condensing boiler can run on a wider range of delta T, such as 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 17 Celsius to 28 Celsius, allowing for lower GPMs and pressure drops through heat exchangers. This saves on pump energy due to reduced flow and head. Applications for using lower return water temperatures in condensing boiler include residential water heating in swimming pools, water source heat pumps, hydronic radiant heating, snow melt systems, and geothermal. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.